Well, good morning, everybody. It is Sunday morning. It's the Lord's Day. Welcome. It's good to be with you. Uh, God bless you for being here. I want to talk to you something today. I don't know if you saw the title. It was Striving for Excellence. It's something that's been on my mind a lot lately. Uh, started working on this last week or maybe earlier this week. I'm not sure exactly when these devotions kind of come as you go. But um, it, it's a couple verses in the scriptures. Verse uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verse 31, a verse that you probably have memorized. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Do all to the glory of God. Do you want to be the best at something, anything, your passion maybe? I do. I want to be the best, the fastest, the most accurate shooter ever. Now, I'll never achieve that. I never. I don't have the time or the money but I'll never get there. But what I can be is the best that I can be at that. In order to do that, I get the great pleasure of practice, practice, practice. So something that I strive for, something that I really want to do, and I work at it. Now, why is it that you and I and all of us, why is it that we have this desire in our hearts? What is our motivation for wanting to be the best at something. Is it personal fulfillment to see that, yes, we can do that, we made it, we accomplished it? Is it fear? Do we fear that if we do something, if we don't do it just best and perfect, that we're going to let ourselves and others down and that that it's, it's, it, we're going to look, be looked down upon? Do we do it out of duty? I know General Robert E. Lee used to say, do your duty in all things. You cannot do more. You must never do less. Do we do things out of duty? And there are many things that we do out of duty. Is that our motivation? Or do we do things to please other people? Is that our goal? We want other people to be happy. We want them to have joy. We want to do what we can to make their lives better. Do we do things to be seen of others? Do we want them to say, to look at us and say, wow, look what he did or look what he can do? Do we do things to impress people? Do we want their praise? Or is our guiding motivation our love for God and our gratitude to him? You ever think about that? We, need, we should love God with everything we've got because of all he's done for us. He, he paid the ultimate price to save us, and he didn't stop there. As if there was more that could be done, God found a way. He's in our lives every day. He takes care of us. He guides us. We can trust him, his wonderful plans for us. We need to love him, and we need to be thankful to him. And that should show in every single thing that we do. So the question, do you, and this goes for me as well, do we always do our best in every endeavor? Or sometimes do we become slackers? I don't know what your answer is to that. I don't like my answer. Maybe too often I become a slacker. I, I don't do it as well, especially uh, sometimes at work. I, I sit there and I just don't feel like messing with something or I don't put out my full effort. Uh, maybe sometimes, and don't tell Julie, maybe when I'm doing chores uh, around the house, uh, I just, I don't wanna, I don't feel like messing with that, or I don't do that as well as I could. I just don't have the passion for it. Do we always do our best? Because he said, whether you, therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. So that would mean feeding the dog for God's glory. Do it well. Do it your best. That would mean cleaning the garage for God's glory. Not even for your enjoyment and pleasure, but for God's glory. That would mean everything we do. Do it for the glory of God. Do we do it with passion? I got to admit, it's hard to be passionate about things sometimes, but... If we're doing it for God, 
Shouldn't we be passionate? Do we invest our time in preparing ourselves for what we need to do? I mean, there, you know, you can't just all the time jump up and do something. I know people that can jump up and do something and they're always good at it. Um, they, they have gifts and talents I don't have, but, but do we always prepare and invest time in preparing ourselves and whatever project we're working on for uh, the time that we do it or the time that we present it? Or do we just expect a good outcome without much effort? Because I can tell you something. And I know this from experience. The outcome is directly related to the preparation every single time. Don't do, and I know we've all done this, don't go to school. I know we don't go to school anymore, most of us. Don't go to school, take a test, and not prepare for that test and expect God to bless you. He's going to bless you. He's going to bless you with the right outcome to motivate you to do the right thing for his glory. That's what he's going to do. Trust me, I know. Whatever you're doing, are you faithful to do it? Regardless of the reward, regardless of the outcome, the outcome is up to God. The preparation, the work, the passion that goes into something, that's up to us. Let's give God something to work with. I know you say, wait, he didn't need anything when he started making people. He just created man out of nothing. Yes, but he wants to do something with you and through you and in your heart and your life. There's another question. Oops. Sorry about that. Did that shake you up? Shook me up. There's another verse. Colossians 3, 22. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, not unto men, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. These verses specifically referring to service to man, but they have two applications, and one is that service to man, but that's directly related to your service to God, and he says so in, in the second verse there, that we are to, to, to do it hardly as to the Lord. The things we do for man are as to the Lord, so the things we do for the Lord are even more so as to the Lord. He says to do it in singleness of heart. One goal, one purpose. When you're doing something for God, get it done. Be focused on it. Do it right. Always do it right. That's what my dad used to say all the time. Do your best in all things. Always do it right. Um, fearing God. Not because we're scared he's going to strike us with lightning. This fearing of God is a respect and a love of such awe that you dread disappointing him in any way. That's the kind of godly fear as his children that we have. He says, whatsoever we do, do it heartily, no matter how menial, no matter how obscure, no matter how difficult, no matter how lowly, or no matter how grandiose, do it for the Lord as unto the Lord, like you're going to present it to the Lord with love and desire to please him. No. Be assured. Know for sure. God will reward you. Don't do it for earthly reward. Don't do it for man's praise. Do it for God. Know that God is going to take care of the reward for your efforts. So everything you do. Wow, that includes eating. And I can really do that well, trust me. I don't even have to prepare much. Eating, drinking, working, ministering, playing, exercising. Do it with all your might, all your strength, all your passion, and for the right reasons, for him and him alone. Not to look good to God, not to look good to others, out of love and gratitude to him. Why? Because that's how your father, almighty God, that's how he does it. When he created you, he made you to his exact specifications. Some things you think you may not like about the way God made you, trust God and give it time. 